Um, so this is a bit weird. I've never done anything like this before, but we move. Here we are. Um, so my name is Leanne Ali. Um, I'm going to be talking to you guys about podcast marketing today. Um, everything from how to even develop a brand to how to present that brand on the socials and how to that translate into different branches and how to get your podcast heard um, and grow your audience. Um, but firstly, I guess I'll just do a little intro to me and who I am. Um, so my name is Jan, like I said. Um, kind of how I got into podcasting is not your usual route. I didn't study um, radio or audio production or anything like that. I only studied marketing. Um, started out working in tech. Um, kind of found my niche in running diversity initiatives at some of the places that I used to work. And in a really weird circle of events, I ended up turning that into a consultancy. So um, a lot of last year I did a lot of diversity consultancy and that kind of focused around audio, um, specifically looking at how certain events and organisations can improve the representation of um, the awards and the events that they were doing. So I worked across like the British Podcast Awards, Audio Production Awards, um, London Podcast Festival and a few more. Um, and that turned into a full-time podcast job. Um, so I did some... I was a project, podcast project manager at Global, which basically was looking after all the launches for all of their podcasts. Um, I also produce Don't Black Dads and Don't Black Women. If you don't know, you should go subscribe. Um, and now currently I'm at the BBC. I work as a producer in their commissioning team, which is all about kind of developing new titles editorially um, from when they are commissioned to when they go live. And also, again, putting together the promotional plans and promotional strategies as to the, um, how we get your content out into the world. Um, so that is a little bit about me. Um, I'm going to share my screen and get into the content of today. Sure. There we go. <coughs> So I'm going to start off by talking about branding. So at this stage, you have recorded an episode of your podcast, maybe you've recorded the whole series, and you want to, it's time to get your podcast out there in the world, but you have to think about what your podcast is going to look like. And I always like to think about this as a brand. Um, and where that starts is with your artwork. So what is your brand? What is your podcast about? With your podcast artwork <clears throat> you need to think about um what you want to communicate with that artwork how can you get succinctly get the message across of your podcast in your artwork um what does your brand stand for think about that as well and how you can communicate that in your artwork and with these I picked out these three because I think these are really good examples of um podcast artwork that really sums up what the podcast is all about so of course we've got the receipt podcast, which is just a visual representation of the colloquialism, colloquialism of gathering receipts, gathering more evidence, which is really funny. And also a really nice touch on this is that um, they have the black hand on there as well, which kind of is a nod to the audience that they're targeting. Um, Diary of a CEO by Stephen Bartlett. He's kind of, that's his look anyway, but this whole simplicity and simple look that he's channeling is very much kind of Steve Jobs, CEO kind of level that he embodies as an individual himself. And it really does what it says on the tin, so it's really self-explanatory. Uniting Zingner I absolutely love because it's about, this podcast is all about um, a woman called Zing, who's kind of going on a journey of self-identity. Um, and um, the whole content of the podcast is whether she should give up her Singaporean passport or um, keep her British passport. And so like, it's like the clash of both cultures and kind of finding your identity in the UK is perfectly summed up in this. Um, artwork with all the nods to the Britishness as well with like the cup of tea and the crown and things like that. So yeah, your brand is super important as it is the first thing that your podcast will be recognised recognizable from. You should also think about how your podcast will stand out when it sits on platform 
whether that be in the Apple iTunes store, on Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever. And just a few tips on um, things to look out for when you're thinking about designing your artwork. Keep it simple. Don't make it too, um, don't make it too extravagant and detailed because when your design is shrinked down, you won't be able to see those details. Think about what colours will stand out against each other. I really like the, um, I really like the um, Real Narcos um, artwork because it's, it's, there's only about three or four colours in there, but it's yellow, it's bold and it really stands out. Um, make sure the title of your podcast is really easily, um, you can see it very, very easily because again, these are things that you need to make sure they stand out. And also a tip here is kind of look at where your podcast will sit in terms of categories and look at what other shows that are similar to yours look like and think about how you can stand out based on that. Another reason why your brand is important is because you have to think about how does your brand translate onto other platforms. And I'll go into more detail about social media marketing later. But um, I picked out a few examples, really good examples of how you can translate your podcast artwork into a consistent brand that you can use across your socials. So on the left, I've got Broccoli Content, and this is from a series that they've done called Anthems. And you can see how neat and concise um, their Instagram feed looks. And the branding is so consistent. So you know that when you see that colorway, and you see that font, you know that that's their podcast called Anthems. In the middle, I've got Alex Reed, who does Time to Talk podcast. His artwork is on the top right. And his whole feed is very, very minimalist. Three colours, navy, white and grey. And it just makes for a really, really strong brand. And strong branding is also helpful for when you eventually grow your podcast even more. And you... Um, are looking at maybe collaborating with um, brands for monetization. On the right, we've got the girls' bathroom, which is super kitsch, super like 90s kitsch, um, kind of Tumblr girl vibes. And this is throughout their whole Instagram feeds. So also think about how you can extend or elements you can take out from your podcast artwork um, to translate on other platforms. And one day when you have grown your podcast and it's super successful, you may want to extend your brand even further and look at um, making this into merchandise. So when I say think about brand extension, think about how your artwork can translate into different mediums, different forms, which is why you don't want to make it too complicated. And I think simple is better in these cases. This is an example from one of my favourite podcasts called The Read. And... As you can see, the artwork is on the right, and they have been able to translate this into so many different um, products from merchandise, from headscarf to hoodies to hats, name it all. So now I want to go on to talk about um, promotional strategy. So you've got your podcast, you've got the actual content, you've got the audio, um, you've got your podcast artwork, you've got the brand. And one more point actually on podcast artwork, do reach out to a designer to commission this, commission this from a designer. Um, and I think, especially now given the times that we're in, um, reach out to some up and coming designers, um, give them a commission, give them an opportunity to design something for you. because you can come up with some really, really lovely, unique stuff. And one way to find these people is on Instagram. There are loads of amazing, um, graphic designers and illustrators out there go do some searching find a vibe that you feel is fitting with your podcast and what you're trying to say and um, commission some artwork um, cool so promo strategy so I kind of work towards about five different pillars for promotional strategy that you can think about um, and I'm just going to go through each of these and then go into a little bit more detail, especially about social media content. <clears throat> so firstly, collaboration. Collaboration is key. And the podcast industry is such a friendly and open space, an open space for collaboration. And this is something you should really leverage, especially when you're just starting out. Um, 
So I would definitely suggest reaching out to other podcasts that have similar um, audiences and sizes of followings to you and ask for collaboration. Um, it's not a begging thing to do. Everybody does it. So don't feel like a bit weird about asking to do a collaboration because if you do a cross collaboration and you go on someone else's podcast and they come onto yours, you're sharing audiences and those audiences can migrate over to each other. So I definitely really um, encourage you to do um, collaboration through getting on different guests. And um, another way you can do this is kind of have a look at um, social pages that share your stuff. Um, so as I mentioned, I do a lot of, um, I produce Dope Black Gas and Dope Black Women. I do a lot of stuff in kind of that black empowerment space. And it's all, it, it will probably be the case of you fo probably follow a lot of these pages already, but there are a lot of pages that I came across when I was trying to um, promote certain things that are just the perfect fit for my audience. So for example, a few that I've collaborated with in the past in terms of um, promoting different events and podcasts and things is like the Black and British Twitter event, British Blacklist, Black Girls Book Club. There's also like different groups such as Burnt Roti and Female Muslim Creatives. All these different communities exist and you can go out and find them online and the majority of the time a lot of these um, platforms are super open to collaboration so whether that be just featuring your podcast on their page or doing like an Instagram live with them or be just being creative with the way that you want to communicate with them because it's just another way to tap into a new audience that isn't um, aware of your content and getting it spread further out there. So do your research on what communities and other platforms are out there that um, would relate to your podcast audience. Um, social media content I'm going to go into in more detail later, um, but I am also want to talk about press and newsletters. The thing about press is that, yes, to be honest, most of the podcast press that you will see on online and news outlets are from like the bigger broadcasters. However, there is literally nothing stopping you from reaching out to journalists who write about podcasts and sharing them, sharing with them your work. The best way to do this is to do some Googling, find out who's writing um, podcast roundups, um, podcast articles and things like that. And I tell you, the easiest thing to do is go on Twitter and about four out of five times I have that email address on their profile. And there's literally nothing stopping you from reaching out and like pitching um, your podcast and what it's all about but when you do so make sure you do it succinctly and precisely and to the point and take out the top um, headlines or from your show as to why they should feature it and if it's an interview based podcast a guest based conversational podcast take out those headlines take out the top lines as to why they should feature your content um, another perhaps slightly more accessible um press outlet that you can use for your podcast is reaching out to specific podcast newsletters um i can name a few that take submissions all the time which are hot pod pod news great british podcast and also look at inside podcasting as well when you're doing this sort of thing you don't have to be exclusively uk based you can go wider and there are so many other podcast newsletters in the us that take submissions and things like that so be proactive and Get your podcast out there as much as you can. One other thing to say on guests is that you can be very smart with the guests that you get on your podcast because yes, you want to be catering to your audience and who you think your audience will want to hear from. But also, if you want to expand that, it's also worth getting people on that maybe sit slightly outside <clears throat> of what your audience expects. And that in itself will bring a different audience to your podcast. And I can give a really good example. So this is before I was working on the podcast, but um, sometime last year, Dope Black Dad did a podcast with a group of white dads, which of course is not their core audience. But it was really interesting to hear that conversation that they had amongst themselves. And that in itself brought a whole new different audience to the show. And it's kind of goes hand in hand with what we're aiming towards, is, which is changing the narrative about the black experience. But some, sometimes when you're trying to achieve that sort of thing, you have to do that outside of your own community because otherwise you're preaching to the choir. And the same concept applies to so many different things. So um, 
Be thoughtful um, about your guests. Get on a range of diverse guests. The more diverse, the better, because you can tap into different audiences. And um, another tip about getting guests, actually, um, use your social accounts to engage with the guests that you really want to get on. If they seem a little bit out of reach, just engage with their content all the time, comment on the stuff all the time, reshare their stuff all the time. Because if they keep seeing you pop up, they'll become familiar with the content that you produce or just at least your brand. And then when you come to make the art, they may actually be more willing to do so. So let's go into some of these in a little bit more detail. <clears throat> recording checklist. So when you're recording content, it's so important to capture content that you can put online to promote the podcast. Because if you're just if you just have your podcast to promote, you don't have anything visual to promote, it's gonna be very difficult to leverage these on Instagram and Twitter. Um Instagram, I think, is the best platform to grow an audience quickly if you know how to use it smartly. And the way I would say to use it smartly would be to follow um, accounts that are similar to yours or accounts that you think your audience will align to. Engage with those accounts. Also leverage um, relevant hashtags to make your um, content like, be seen further. And really, you can... If you're consistent and consistency is the key, you can build your Instagram following very, very quickly. But like I said, you need content to put on those channels in order to promote your podcast. So um, this is based on if we were in person, but I'll go on to what you can do remotely as well. Um, on your recording checklist, if you have a guest, if it's a guest-based podcast, always get a photo with the guest. Um, if you can get some behind the scenes um, action as well, that's always really helpful. And then it's always good to take like a very like like nice little meaty little um, clickbaity little line from the podcast if you're recording the whole thing. You don't have to. Um, I would also this is just my personal opinion because people have different thoughts about this, but I don't personally think recording a whole podcast episode is essential like video recording and then putting that content out on YouTube the reason because if you have both YouTube and podcast you're kind of splitting your audience um I prefer just putting out short little clips that drive the podcast but it's up to you experiment with what works I do know it works for a few different platforms but that's just my personal opinion <clears throat> And you can also just have yourself and a guest doing a little like summary of what happened in that episode. So now we're actually remote. This has changed a tiny little bit. Um, only a tiny little bit. Um, so there are other things that you can do for social content when um, based on the situation that we're in. So the example on the left is a video that Marvin did from Dead Black Dad. So we did an episode loosely based around what would you do if you were the black mayor and he did a little video which is it looks like a BBC news kind of item and he was making the dress as if he were the black mayor which is quite funny and um, so always think about in the time that we're in now think about what content you can create to drive people to your podcast <clears throat> Also, if you're using Zoom, which is probably the easiest thing to use if you're recording podcasts right now, what's good about it is that the when you're recording, it records the video as well as the audio. So are there any little clips or bloopers that you can clip out and put these on your socials just to, again, drive people to the podcast? This is a really great time to be creative and use what we've got to um, put stuff out there. It's a really thing about how you can be creative. Um, episode titles and descriptions. This is a pretty important one because it helps make your show more discoverable and it makes people, enhances people's chances of whether they're going to click in this or not. So for your titles, make sure that <clears throat> you your titles are SEO heavy and they sum up the theme of the podcast to make it more discoverable. Um, and <clears throat> paying your question to the audience that is created in the episode is a really great way to do that. Um, 
And another thing that you can do, I don't do this as much anymore, but another thing that you can do, especially if you're talking about a subject that is um, kind of topical at the time, go on Google Trends and look at like the top related terms related to those trends and kind of incorporate that into your title. Um, so for example, I produced an episode this week about council culture on Fact Twitter and we had a guest on DD Mills. It was, it's also, if you have a guest and they're well known, put their name at the front um, because that's what's going to make people click. So the title that I chose for that episode was DD Mills on council culture on Fact Twitter. All really topical um, terms related to what had gone on that week. Um, for your descriptions, make sure you front load that with either an interesting fact or quote from, um, in the first sentence um, or a question. Basically, the first sentences have to be a hook for the listener because especially on some platforms, the um, it kind of, you don't, they, on some platforms you can only see like the first sentence or so, which is why it's really important that you really grab your listener's attention as early as possible as you can. So, also make sure you have your social links in there and like how people can contact you um, and any show notes if relevant, because I personally find it really annoying when they're, if you listen to a podcast and they're talking about a specific article or TV show or something and they don't link it in the description, it's really annoying. So here are some examples of some really good slash really bad episode descriptions. So on the left, we've got Laid Blair. This, the title is good, although I would get rid of the episode 29 because, again, when you see this on app, especially in Apple Podcasts, the episode 29 takes up too many characters, so you don't actually see too much of the title. Um, And then the description doesn't tell you what happens in the episode, it just tells you who is on it. So you just need a little bit more detail there. Diary of a CEO, this... um, description and title is a little bit better um but the reason the high lows one is so so good is that it goes into exactly what they talk about on the podcast how you can contact them and has all the links everything that they're talking about as well so here's just a couple of things that i put on my social checklist when talking about podcasts these are super simple things but it can make a big impact in terms of um developing the um awareness of your podcast um so make sure you've got a banner um in your twitter bio for your podcast and links in your bio create a hashtag for your podcast so what i would suggest is create a separate instagram account for um your podcast but when it comes to twitter unless you're amazing on twitter it's up to you but i would create a hashtag for people to engage with instead of like adding your account all the time because then it makes it easier to follow any um discussion um on instagram um use the features that they have on instagram to really kind of create discussion and leverage um different audiences like go on lives with different podcasters do like polls do ask me anything um use relevant popular hashtags to kind of make your um content more seen is a really good tip and also facebook let's not forget facebook um it's a great place to generate discussion and like I said before about finding those different community groups, Facebook is a great place to find um, where your audience might be. So look at different community groups on Facebook and um, share your content within there. Because that's another way to um, get some extra reach. <clears throat> and let me talk about social media for a bit, because social media is one of the key ways to grow your podcast and especially in a time that we are in now in quarantine where we're recording things remotely you have to be really creative with your social content um and these are some screenshots from the dope black women instagram page which you can see are really consistent in terms of brand which makes it instantly recognizable but there's loads of different um touch points within this um that you can connect with your audience with we personally and i'm not taking credit for this because i don't look after the social media accounts but we personally look at travel health and well-being mental health um profiling those from our community and at the moment as we're in isolation self-isolation activities 
Um, so have a think about what other touch points you can use to connect with your audience and how you can present this in your um, Instagram feed. Um, there are some really great examples in here. So we've got a couple like um, recommendations and um, those period apps. Sometimes we pull out quotes from specific episodes or high profile black women. Um, we profile some of our women within the community and get the tips on whatever the area of expertise is. You could do the same thing with um, whatever guests you get on or people from your audience. And then a couple other features that we have that are unique to our page is um, our travel post to like five things black women should do in X location, the self isolation activities, and also posing a question to the audience to create a conversation is a great way to generate engagement. So think about what touch points you can use to generate engagement through your social channels and make sure your branding is consistent because once you grow your um, online channels, the podcast your podcast audience will grow organically <laughs> these are just a few other examples of um branded podcast posts which i think work really nicely um and it really just really nicely gets across kind of what the podcast is all about right so you have now recorded your podcast you've got your branding that is all sorted for your artwork you have set up your social media accounts for your podcast and now um it's the actual launch so what do you do when you're actually about to come to launch a podcast so i've done like a two week kind of rough social plan um this is based on hannah witten's doing it podcasts which worked really well um and there's loads of different things you can do but this is just a little bit of a kind of one-stop shot I would um a couple of weeks before you actually launch when you re release your trailer because you should release a trailer before you release the first episode um put, make an announcement on your social channels and drive your audience to um go and follow your social accounts for your podcast um it's really nice to kind of do a post on why you started the podcast what it's about and why the audience should listen and this is the sort of time where you should start engaging with other accounts that do similar stuff and kind of start online networking <clears throat> um, a few days before launch you can post a question to the audience as to what content they would like to see or who they would like to see on the podcast um, and if your podcast involves audience engagement like sending in dms or dilemmas or stuff this is the time to do it Um, a few days before launch, um, and this is just general content that you can put on your channel just to kind of talk about why you started the podcast and start your daily countdown. Um, and it's really nice to just do a little countdown with content related to your podcast on your Instagram feed. It just looks really nice as well. And then on launch day, announce that your podcast is live. Make sure your guest is sharing it. Make sure you have... Um, nice little assets that kind of show what the podcast is all about um, and share this with relevant communities online like I said on Facebook um, and then also go back to those other um, community groups whether that be Twitter or whatever to see if they can share your content too. <clears throat> so a few I think oh, that is mostly what I want to say about this um, and then like a few last things on this is that building an audience takes a lot of time it takes a lot of effort and doing your podcast is one thing and then building your social channels is another job in itself but consistency is key and I know it's hard but you need to make sure that if you're going to do a weekly podcast you stick to a weekly podcast and you do an array of um, social media posts to accompany this um because that is what's going to make your podcast grow and it takes time and it takes effort but um it's worth it um so do your best to put in all the effort you can into building to focusing on the promotion of your podcast as well as the content and you'll get there 100 you will get there you've got this and yeah 
I think that is it from me for now. I think we will go on to some questions. Right. Okay, so a couple questions. How about getting social stuff with guests when they are under lockdown? Okay, really good question. So like I showed earlier, you can do a video, if you're using Zoom, you, you can do a video record of your whole session. Or this is again, this is about being creative. You can do, you can ask your um, guests to record stuff for you. And you know, I'm going to actually get an example pull up um, for one of the podcasts that I work on called The Reality Tea and they've been recording remotely for I don't know how many weeks now but and this can be for any guest it doesn't have to be like famous guests but as an example doo -doo -doo, They do this segment for their socials called Sip or Spill, which is basically like a would you rather type um, segment. And usually they'll do this in the studio, obviously, but seeing as they can't do that, they've been asking their guests to do that, um, just filming it themselves, really. Um, so yeah, I actually can't find an example right now, but um, it is absolutely fine to ask your guests to record stuff for you and then send it to you so you can share it on your social channels, but equally you can also record stuff via Zoom so you're all in the picture. Um, another question, how important is market research? Market research is super, super important, especially in terms of <clears throat> being aware of what other podcasts are out there and who's doing some of the stuff to you. And it's important that you understand this so you can kind of see what's out there what's really working what's not and then how you can make yourself stand out and be different because you need to have a usp when it comes to podcasts because the market is so saturated you need to have a unique perspective tone of voice in order for people to come and want to listen so market research is super important in terms of knowing what's already out there what works what doesn't um and it's also important in terms of understanding who your audience is if you yourself are someone that is someone that identifies as someone from the audience, that is super easy. If you're trying to reach an audience that you don't necessarily know much about or don't connect to as much, then it's even more important that you do your market research because from a marketing perspective, that will help you understand where to find your audience, what they're interested in, what other touch points you can use to engage with them in order to kind of build a community around your podcast <clears throat> um another question i've temporarily paused my podcast to when restrictions are loosened should i do a relaunch when i release my next episodes really good question um and i think you definitely should i think it's a cause for celebration it's a cause to make noise about what you're doing again and whether you're doing it consistently or you're doing series to series run if you're doing a series to series run you should always do a um, relaunch a strong relaunch when you come back for a new series to get your listeners excited about what's coming and even before you come back um do like you just or even in your on series breaks make sure you keep engaging with your audience find out kind of um again it's like looking at those different touch points like what can you um do to engage with your audience whilst you're not um putting out podcast episodes so yeah i definitely think you should do a relaunch um another question has come through the question is do you think it's harder <clears throat> do you think it's harder to get an audience currently because people's podcast habits have changed hmm that's a really interesting question <clears throat> and to be honest there's different data coming in that are showing different different things um i think at the beginning of lockdown podcast listening had gone down slightly yes because people's um consumption habits have changed because a lot of people listen during their commute 
that lockdown has gone on, that's changing more, a little bit more. So people are listening more on desktop while they're working. Um, so it fluctuates a little bit, but the fluctuation has been really, really minor. But what I will say is that now is a really good time to start making your content because people are at home, they don't have much else to do, and people are really out there looking for new things to listen to and to do, and they're really discovering new content. So now would be a really good time to do so. Um, I mean, especially if you're doing lockdown related content because it's so topical, but um, there is also a lot of that at the moment. But I do think um, now is a good time to start building because you also have that time and headspace to do all those other things properly in terms of building your socials and your brand. So I wouldn't, um, if you're thinking about kind of delaying until lockdown is over, I wouldn't necessarily say you have to. I would say start now. I think now is a really good time to start building an audience. Um, are there any other questions? Mm -hmm. No more questions. Cool. <clears throat> well, I guess that's it from me. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, my social is on Twitter. You can find me at Leanne Alley. That's L E A W -N, N E A L I E. I'm always talking about podcast stuff. So if you need any tips on anything, feel free to flood my DMs, I don't mind. Um, and yeah, so I think that's all from me. Happy podcasting. And I hope to listen to some of your podcasts in the future. <laughs>